Welcome, faraway friends. I hope your journey has gone well since last we spoke. So, for the last 48 hours off and on, I have been trying to convey this thought that occurred to me on stream, uh, or felt it bubbling up on stream, and then occurred to me probably the morning after. It's been hard. It's been uh, surprisingly elusive and difficult to try to get all of my thoughts in order around it in a reasonably succinct for me way that was um, helpful for you know, other people, which is kind of the whole point I'm doing this, um, this side project, the series of videos, to be a, a resource for GMs and players and you know, anybody interested in the hobby. So I'm going to take you, so title of this is bold, um, you know, reducing, to, reducing avoiding 70% of the fights at your table. Uh, I'm going to take you through the tool first. I'm going to describe the tool, and then I'm going to give you um, a, uh, an example of that. I think that works best. So, tool is, the goal is having a consistent, well-reasoned, uh, standard operating procedure, a set, a whole interlocking supporting sets, sets of those. Uh, and the first building block of that is setting expectations, sometimes called um, uh, aligning, you know, the expectations with one another. It's pretty well covered now by session zero. That's basically where we seem to have landed, um, again, as a hobby. Back in the day, uh, Vampire the Masquerade era for me, that would have been prologues. Um, you have prologue with each character, you interweave them. And through that process, you organically explore what themes you're going to tackle, um, the places that the players want to go, places they don't want to go, um, places they're potentially willing to go. Um, and that's there's the whole negotiation aspect to that. Uh, personally, I still find that more um, narratively satisfying. It's what I used for all the Dark Pole characters. But in any event, um, that's that's been solved you know one way or the other and we basically agree now that having everybody being on the same page is a, is a good idea it's not absolutely essential but it is a really good idea okay uh that however is not enough in and of itself because in high stress situations or even just in uh kind of more normal moments of play uh people are going to uh are going to test they're going to test that um sometimes sometimes they just forget Sometimes they forget what they agreed to. Sometimes they don't care. That's a lot more rare. Uh, sometimes they're anxious about it, but whatever's going on, you are going to have the opportunity to not only set these expectations, you're gonna have the opportunity to hold these expectations. I know that can be hard, and I've been trying and trying and trying as the, with these different iterations of this freaking video to figure out a way to make that a little easier. And really, you know, I like acknowledging that uh, not everybody is a huge fan of conflict, um, that if you have too much conflict at the table, um, ironically enough, the very tool that you're trying to employ, you know, can generate some conflict, but in the long run, uh, being able to hold in line and say, okay, this is what you agreed to, this is what we all agreed to, and so this is what is going to happen. Super important, because ultimately you're honoring the integrity of the activity for everyone. Uh, and... The good news here is that the first time that you hold that is going to be the hardest. And with each subsequent time, just like a muscle, it gets stronger and stronger. Not only does it become easier for you internally, it also becomes easier for the table. They know what to expect. They, they see that you have acted in integrity and that you have uh, made sure to hold the space of, uh, for whatever was agreed upon. And then finally, when this happens consistently enough, and when this happens um, thoroughly enough, you then uh, can reach what, in my humble opinion, is a worthy goal, which is having a series of consistent, well-reasoned, standard operating procedures. Um, and the consistent part is self-explanatory. The, the well-reasoned part is these aren't arbitrary. You have something very particular in mind for why you have why you are asking people to uh to agree to this parameter right 
So the example I'm going to use is the player who overtalks other players at the table and, and overtalks the GM. This can happen in combat, this can happen out of combat, it doesn't really matter. You're going to more uh, commonly see it happening in combat because of the stakes that uh, tip typically combats the most are the higher stakes, highest stakes in a combat, particularly in D&D. Vampire, not so much. Um, other games, may maybe, maybe not, but D&D, you're going to see it there a lot, and, and many other systems as well, for obvious reasons, right? It's your external, you know, your external conflict. And to, to be, you know, fair, and to put this into perspective, if you have somebody who's portrayed a character for two or three thousand hours over the course of a long-running campaign it's it's quite understandable why somebody could get worked up over the prospect of getting the character wiped out right um you know i mean i certainly get atta attached to my characters um but ultimately um so you 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 really do want to honor what everyone has agreed to so to wit, you have someone who, let's say, out of out of combat, they're over talking you. You know, you start to try to give a description, right? You're going to do that every single session, um, and they start to talk over you. You can, uh, and you you've so you've set the expectation of. I, I know this sounds remedial, but this is uh, this is this is important. Like this this is important. This is this is kind of breaking it down here. You set the expectation that we're going to strive for good communication. When I'm speaking, you're listening. When you're speaking, I'm listening. Same with you know player to player. And that's just going to kind of further everybody. And almost everyone is going to say yes to that. You, nobody's going to be thinking, oh yeah, I'm just going to run the other people over. Probably, be you know, be an odd bird who is sitting there doing that. Um, and. We'll get to that too you know if you do have the kind of those outliers it, it's it's been a rare thing i would I can, I can really only think of about two or three times and now four decades of jamming that i've you know actually had to just boot somebody from the table um and that's okay too uh yeah so they're over talking you and when you hold that that can look like hold on do 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 okay um or uh, and for the most part, if it's a description, that's probably sufficient. If it's in combat, um, you can have, and different tables run combat very, very differently. And I won't get into that. That's beyond the scope of this video. But if, if it's in combat and you have player one and whatever the procedures are for that, you have gone through them, right? And those can be negotiated and, and talked about. Um, and, you know, some in in some game systems are simple enough where it's like very clear when a turn is over. In fifth ed, it can be a little fuzzy because you have bonus actions and reactions and, you know, players acting on other people's turns and, you know, don't forget your movement and, you know, et cetera. Um, so you may want to have something like a, is your turn over, you know, Mercer style, uh, just to, you know, confirm that. It does make it a little bit slower, but probably in the long run, it's for the best. Uh, so, you have player one who is habitually over talking other players and cutting into your attempt to adjudicate their round. Now, here's, I oh, won't deviate yet. So you have that, um, you have that going on and that can look like, uh, that can look like, hold on, or that can look like, you know, you know, can I do so-and-so? That can look like, sorry, your turn's over and you just move on. It's not a big back and forth. It's not an existential debate. You, it's not even really a ruling. You're just kind of asserting, reasserting what everyone has agreed to, i.e. that we're going to be respectful of each other and, and metaphorically and literally turn take. Uh, once this happens enough, uh, it in a good way, it takes on a life of its own. And at that point you have a consistent, speaks for itself, well-reasoned, reason being we can all communicate with each other and hear each other standard operating procedure so how would this how would this not happen right well uh, in this case this would not happen because oddly enough um in my homebrews and i did not really think about this until i was spurred to make this video then i had to re-examine that um 
and my own behavior because <laughs> whenever there's an issue first person you look at is yourself see see what's going on there and I realized that in my home game I would often let uh, myself get well not often but I would I would sometimes let myself get talked over as a GM and I didn't really care that much so I never allowed players to stomp on other players that was a hard that was a hard no but for myself in a long running uh, game where everybody you know respects each other and basically at that uh, at that last one I mean I would say most of us loved each other you know it was a very um, tight knit group some some issues and some players that ultimately didn't finish the campaign with us but um, even then you know we were all really close so I never felt um, I actually I, some people would maybe experience that as being disrespectful like I didn't really experience it that way I was just like okay you know I'll get I'll get the stuff out there and sometimes I would be like hold up da, 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 okay um, but it wasn't as big of a deal when you're on a stream and you already have all the barriers to communication from one that one human always has to other humans then you layer on top of that the fact that the audience who is watching is not physically in the room so they can't see everything they can basically only see what the cameras can see and they also critically can't ask clarifying questions that they naturally would as players uh, so clear lines of communication and like having a discipline table in by my lights like as far as I can tell are at a premium and that uh, that was like I said that's kind of on me because I needed to shift that expectation and then I needed to hold that expectation you know, we're on episode 25 and I can and there's video evidence of this I mean I can go back and I can see it. it's like yep okay this is so this is you know, this is uh, the saying of relationships or what you tolerate prime example um, and in and in this case you know reward right because any time that any time that you don't hold the line and you have um, the player violating these expectations that you set although in this case I never set that expectation um, then you've then you've got trouble and it kind of weakens it for the group other people see that happening and all kinds of stuff can go on from there this again beyond the scope of the of this video but it's important to it's important to know why it's so flipping and flipping crucial to hold to whatever those expectations are um, so set the expectations hold to the expectations achieve you know a very solid uh, SOP and that um, I'll tackle one more quickly uh, run this through with mechanics because this can apply to mechanics this can apply to logistics you know something as something as quotating and as how long do we wait for a late player before we start playing you know uh, doesn't have to be a hard and fast rule but at some tables there are you know and I've tried both approaches but specifically to mechanics so uh, if you set the expectation of for example a uh, gritty a war story ground reality grounded war story and you have the mechanic of uh, healing is super slow compared to uh, rules as written fifth edition then where you just you know your whack a mold back up I mean you just pop back up from one to however many you know 300 hit points or whatever if you have that many um, you're good to go after eight, eight hours of rest so I've made it one die four uh, plus con modifier which actually does have a precedent and one version of basic dandy way back in the day uh, and that allows for a war story that allows for a uh, long running you know for a beat down to be a really big deal to be a serious obstacle this long running obstacle and for these characters to be in peril you're gonna get pushback you're gonna have if you if, when you have a shift like that now my players trust me um, they respect me but you know it's 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 a lot like it's a lot and I'm not saying th this is not verbatim or anything but like you can get things like okay this is generating anxiety for me all right this is really drag my personal favorite GM this is total this is totally unrealistic um, tell that to the combat medic about how you know healing times uh, it's like maybe this is this is actually quite generous um, but point being 
once you hold that expectation, that mechanical expectation enough, and this is always how it functions, and yes, this is really how it's going to function, and we know that healing is limited, and we know that the GM is going to apply this to the NPCs as well. Like that's super important. Don't don't give the NPCs things that you're not giving the PCs in that uh, in that regard. Um, my my advice anyway. Um, eventually, not only will they come to accept it, they'll come to lean into it, and they may even come to appreciate it. They may never get there um, because it's you know they're they're still like oh, God, he's obsessed with this you know the slow heal. But um, they will at least lean into it, and they'll know what to expect, and they'll know, you know, kind of how to work it to their advantage. And then you have achieved a consistent, well-reasoned uh, standard operating procedure. The reason being, I want to tell, I want to have the mechan mechanical capacity to tell a war story. All right, y'all. I hope that was helpful. Um, that's what I got. I, I don't think it's going to get any better than that. I've tried and tried. Uh, if there are any questions you have for me, please leave a comment um, or hit me up on Discord, and I will uh, make, maybe make a follow-up video, um, you know, answer you in the comments, all that stuff. All right, I hope this was helpful. Keep learning out there and stay safe. Bye-bye.